Hey guys, Triple T Cat here, recording for the Zombie Arcade. You're watching Meet the Weapon, and today I'm using the SVD with the default attachment loadout, so we've just got a 7x scope on here, nothing else. I know I said a few videos ago that I was going to be doing something new with these series in terms of how I was going to be doing the videos, uh, and basically I tried to do that today, but there were some problems that I had not foreseen, and it didn't quite come out how I had hoped, but I did get this game out of it, which was a pretty good game, so I figured... I could use this game to do a, uh, a video commentary in the style to which you have grown accustomed of Meet the Weapon. So, of course, as per always, we will be talking about this gun in real life before we get into talking about it in the game. So, the SVD is also known as the Dragonoff Sniper Rifle, which is, it's named after the designer whose name, uh, oh shit. If Evgeny Dragunov, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, Y-E-V-G-E-N-Y, uh, anyway. It's a semi-automatic sniper rifle developed in the late 50s and early 60s in the Soviet Union, and this entered production in 1963 after being adopted for use by the Soviet Union. It was a little bit unusual for its time, as the SVD was developed as a squad support, or sort of a designated marksman rifle, as opposed to being a pure sniper rifle. And basically the idea was that uh, in the years following World War II, infantry squads switched from using semi-automatic and bolt-action rifles like they used in World War II to predominantly using assault rifles and submachine guns. And what that meant was that they basically lost a bit of their sort of long-range accuracy and fire ability, and the Soviet Union wanted to get some of that back by basically attaching marksmen to standard infantry platoons and they wanted a rifle to do that. So they ended up choosing the SVD, uh, and this gun is ultimately used in this role by over 30 countries, and this gun's actually still in use today, despite having uh, first been developed in, well, first been manufactured in the early 60s. The SVD fires a 762 by 54 mm round, so it's the same size as the round used in the PKP Pechenegg, although this uses one that is specially designed to be a marksman round. It fires it from a 24-inch barrel with a maximum range of a little over a kilometer, although this gun is somewhat less precise than a pure sniper rifle. The semi-automatic fire and the barrel is a little bit less precise than a lot of pure sniper rifles. Uh, it's fed by a 10-round box magazine, and interestingly for a marksman rifle, this gun can actually mount a bayonet, which I guess it further emphasizes that this is meant as a squad support weapon, not, again, you know, as a pure sniper rifle. So don't be camping in any dark corners with this thing, motherfuckers! Get in there and kill people! Uh, anyway, <laughs> the, the rifle features backup iron sights, which in real life can actually be used in conjunction with the standard scope, so if they're too close uh, for you to want to use your scope, you can actually, uh, in real life, look down the iron sights while still having that scope fitted, that feature uh, not in this game. And in real life, this is actually issued standard with the PSO-1 4 times scope, which is also in Battlefield 3, but uh, is not the default for this weapon, you have to unlock it. Um, so that's the gun in, in real life. In the game, as I mentioned in the Mark 11 Mod Zero videos, I'm not a huge fan of the semi-autos. This is a, uh, a two to three shot kill depending on distance. Uh, again, sometimes a headshot is not actually going to kill in one hit, which I really don't like from a sniper rifle. And I guess, I, I don't know, I, I just, I don't, I'm not a huge fan of sniper rifles in this game in general. But I tend to prefer the bolt actions because, uh, basically, if I'm going to be using a sniper rifle, I want that higher precision, higher damage, higher punch. The semi-autos are nice in a way because if you fix a laser sight with some of them in particular that have better hipfire accuracy, you can run and gun a fair bit, and that, that can be nice. Uh, obviously, this loadout I'm using here, the default for this gun with just a 7x scope, is, is rubbish for that. You can see here, actually, I was a little bit uncomfortable here. I wanted to run down and really get on that boat objective, but I felt like I sort of had to stick back because... Down here, I'm extremely vulnerable, I'm extremely out of my element with this 7x scope and the, the poor hipfire accuracy. And in fact, of the semi-autos, the SVD is probably my least favorite. I, I'm really not a fan of this gun, because the SVD has a longer reload time than the Mark 11 Mod Zero, but it's otherwise pretty much the same thing. And the other semi-autos have a lot of advantages over this rifle. They have better hipfire accuracy, the rounds travel faster, some of them have a faster rate of fire. So, I mean, basically, I'm, I'm really not a fan of this gun. I am going to show you uh, one other loadout on it in the next video that isn't too bad, and in fact, I would have probably used in this game. It's, it's mostly a loadout focused around defending on, uh, on Rush, actually, but uh, here, of course, using the standard setup. 
But uh, generally speaking, I'm I'm not really a fan of this gun. I was pretty happy when I finished unlocking all the attachments for it, so I never have to use it again, except of course to uh, to make these videos. For those of you who don't know, I'm working on unlocking all attachments for all weapons at the moment. I've almost completely finished the main kits. I'm almost down to only having shotguns left, and then of course close quarters is going to come out. But you know that's that's cool. So yeah, I mean, just not a fan of this gun, but uh, I, I don't know. It's it's not too terrible. I do decently enough with it in this game. Uh, in, in a bit, you'll see I sort of switch to camping in this but We end up losing this this phase of objectives, and I end up sort of camping out in this building and getting quite a lot of kills. And I, I do want to talk a bit about this position here and, and what I sort of do here, because this is obviously sort of a map-specific thing, but this is a phenomenally good position to cover the Bravo objective on this phase. You'll notice out of these corner windows, I can actually look straight over to the Bravo, Bravo bomb site, and I can stop people from arming really, really effectively. And I can also cover one of the, well, actually a couple of the approaches up to A. I can't see A itself, but I can cover pretty much all the approaches to that objective. So, I mean, this building is, if you want to defend from sort of a medium range instead of being right up in there, this is a fantastic position. And you can see I'm not moving down to A. I, again, my play style, I'd rather be getting right in there on the objectives. But I do want to say that this kind of positioning means that you're still useful to your team. This is a very, very strong position. And so if you want to play recon or support and you don't want to be right up in people's faces because you're using a weapon that's much more focused around medium to long range, um, that's fine and you can do that effectively. And I mean, again, this would be a situation where you could be packing... A, a bolt action rifle with like a, a nice high uh, high zoom scope to let you get these shots a little bit more easily if you find that easier. I personally don't. Um, you could even position yourself a bit further away on some other maps, but you need to be. I'd say you want to be within 150 meters, even if you're using a 12 times scope, because at about 200 meters, because of the fact that people move somewhat unpredictably and stuff, it becomes really, really hard to actually kill people and you're not likely to be able to do that much to defend the objectives. So, you want to ideally be within about 100 meters and you need to have clear sight lines on at least one of the objectives and and that's okay. You can say you're helping your team then even though you're not somebody who's running in on the objectives because you are still somebody who can actively cover and defend the objectives from that position. And you'll see in a bit here, I've got my spawn beacon and my tugs down. I end up I find myself, um, eventually I get a bit, a bit distracted from actually covering the objectives, and I find myself sort of tied up with fighting inside this building using my pistol and stuff, because people keep coming and trying to extricate me, and you might think, at that point, it's better to just change positions and get the fuck out of there, but the thing about it is, is, since this is a strong position, um, it, it's equally strong for the enemy team, it's a very strong defensive position for that Bravo objective, and if the enemy team holds it instead of my team, they can make it very, very difficult for us to defuse. They can make it a lot easier to clear the area around the bomb so they can go in and plant. And so, I guess what I'm trying to get at is that, um, well, I do think that it's generally best, or at least it's my preferred playstyle, and I do think it's generally best to be defending the objectives in a very direct fashion. It can also be helpful to your team as as a supporting role, as a recon or a support kit, which are sort of, yeah, more supporting-based roles, particularly the support kit, as the name implies. It, it can still be helpful to your team to hold a strong point somewhere other than the objective, if it's somewhere of strategic importance. So when it comes to, like, I, I don't want, I'm not encouraging people to, like, strong point on a hill 500 meters from the objective where they can barely hit anything and it's of no real significance, but... Stuff like this is a reasonable way to play the recon class that is still helpful to your team. So, I mean, don't be afraid. To, like, Don't feel like you necessarily always have to be running in onto the objective at all points in time. That's the role of a couple classes, and that might be the playstyle that about... Like, a lot of people on the team do need to be playing that way. But you don't need everybody doing that. And it can also be really helpful to have these people in, uh, in more supporting positions, holding down positions like this. So, yeah, I, I just wanted to say that, because I know I talk a lot about playing the fucking objective and stuff like that, but I want to be clear that playing the fucking objective uh, does not necessarily have to mean being right next to the objective at all points in time. As long as you are doing something... I think I talked about this in one of the other videos on Conquest, where I was uh, supporting my teammates in an attack as a support kit player and sort of following up behind them. As long as you're doing something to put pressure on to defend to guard the objective, as long as you can directly 
attack the objective in some way, even if it's from kind of a distance, that's okay, and I'm I'm not going to be that mad at you. Just make sure it's a distance where you can actually be effective, for fuck's sake. Anyway, I went, uh, I think, 23 and 11 in that game. A little bit hard to see in my preview window there. Thought it was a decent one. Let me know what you thought of the video. And uh, until next time, Triple T Cat out.